啊，各位同事早晨啊。Members, good morning. We've got a quorum already, so may I now call the meeting to order. Members, the meeting has already started. Miss Emily Lau, on the fifth of May, wrote to me, informing the, me that she would like to、um, withdraw from this bills committee. So this is for members' information. Please invite the administration in. Members, please don't leave. Good. 请官员就座啦。Please be seated。早晨早晨啊，秘書長。Good morning. As we have、um, a number of meetings going on at the same time this morning, members are extremely busy. We are now in the final stages、um, of、um, scrutinising the spill, and I hope that we can complete clause by clause scrutiny today. Remember, as last time,、uh, we finished、um, clause seventy-two,、um, and today we will start from clause seventy-three,、um, section two three eight amended, and this is page C three one o nine of the English version.、Uh, Mr. Dennis Quark,、um, is it that you've got、um, some questions? Chairman, the IFPI Hong Kong Group wrote to the Bills Committee on the 18th of February on、um, contract override.、Uh, a number of justifications were put forward in the letter, and in fact, I got、um, a number of questions、um, on those justifications. In fact,、um, this is a matter of um, um, concern. Um, To、um, me and to others, and、uh, not、uh, not to waste members' time, I've prepared a list of、um, questions、uh, for the deputy secretary. And so I would now like to、um, forward this list of questions to um, the um, administration. So can the、um, secretary make、uh, please make copies for us? Right. So we will um, um, invite the administration to give a reply. So after we finished、um, clause by clause scrutiny, we will、um, follow up on comments made by the various deputations. So may I refer members、um, to page C three one o nine of the blue bill? And、uh, it's page. Ninety-four of the marked-up copy,、um, section two three eight amended. I think、um, we can start, Miss Strong. Yes, that's、um, Chairman Clause seventy-three, section two three eight. Expressions having same meaning as in copyright provisions. Um, this um, part is about the rights of the、uh, performers. And、um, uh, the rights and、um, exemptions are, are similar to those we've covered. So,、um, uh, subsection one um, to um, insert communication to the public. I want to say that in fact、um, these expressions have the same meaning、um, in this part as in、uh, the part on、um, copyright. All right, so let's move on.、Um, section two three nine. Yes, Chairman. 
um, index of defined expressions. So um, in the index, we have um, inserted um, communication to the public, and the relevant provisions are section two three eight one and section twenty eight capital A two. Um, next one. Yes, Chairman, that's uh, section two four one. It will be deleted and substituted by um, a new um, section, criticism, review, quotation and reporting and commenting on current events. Uh, in fact, this is um, an expansion of the exemption in section 39. And uh, um, these are also exemptions applicable to um, the performers. These are um, the same as um, those applicable to copyright. Um, so, um, fair dealing with a performance of fixation for the purpose of criticism or review of the performance of fixation or an other performance of fixation or of a work does not infringe any of the rights conferred by this part if the performance of fixation has been released or communicated to the public. Then, subsection 2, the rights conferred by this part are not infringed by the use of a quotation from a performance of fixation, whether for the purpose of criticism, review, or um, otherwise. And the conditions are the same uh, as those for um, copyright. Um, namely, the performance of fixation has been released or communicated to the public. The use of the quotation is fair dealing w um, with the performance of fixation and the extent of the quotation is no more than is required by the specific purpose for which it is used. Then subsection 3, fair dealing with a performance or fixation for the purpose of reporting or commenting on current events does not infringe any of the rights conferred by this part. And then four, in determining whether any dealing with a performance of fixation is fair dealing under subsection 1, 2, B or 3, the court must take into account all the circumstances of the case. And in particular, um, the purpose and nature of the dealing, including whether the dealing is for a non-profit making purpose and whether the dealing is of a commercial nature. And then B, the nature of the performance of fixation and C, the amount and substantiality of the portion dealt with in relation to the performance of fixation as a whole, and D, the effect of the dealing on the potential market for or value of the performance of fixation. And finally, number five, for the purposes of subsections 1 and 2 bracket A, a performance has been released to the public if it has been held in the public life or provided to the public or by any means other than by communication to the public, including the issue of a fixation of the performance to the public. And then uh, B, the rental of a fixation of the performance to the public and number three, the playing or showing of a fixation of the, of the performance to the public. And then under B, a fixation has been released to the public if it has been provided to the public by any means other than by communication to the public, then including um, the following three channels. Number one, the issue of the fixation to the public, and number two, the rental of the fixation to the public, and three, the playing or showing of the fixation to the public. And then C, in determining whether performance of fixation has been released or communicated to the public, no account is to be taken of any unauthorized act. And number six, expressions in this section have the same meaning as in section 39. Yes, I like to clarify number 4A on non-profit making and then commercial nature. 
Now, if it's non-profit making, does it mean that it is not of a commercial nature? Are they the same? Now, commercial nature uh, covers a wider scope, and profit making or not is one of it. But if it's a commercial nature, it is like a, a business uh, conducted in this particular way, and it may not be profit making. But we have to remember that this is for fair dealing, and even if it is for profit making, but if it's considered fair, then the exemption still applies. And so this is a holistic assessment. Now, whether or not it's for profit-making or commercial nature is one of the things the court will take into account. Now, what about large uh, commercial bodies if they run large-scale um, charitable acts, and not for making um, profits? So is it considered commercial or not? Now, when the court is to decide, it will look at the whole thing if it's... Um, purely um, charitable and it's large scale, then it could be of a commercial nature. At the end of the day, it may not be profit making, but this is not the uh, decisive factor. If it's basically charitable act on a large scale uh, involving certain uh, buying and selling, this is one of the things to be taken into account. But per, by itself, it will not necessarily uh, violate the fair dealing uh, clause. Now, in the U.S., uh, these have been established already. So, is it necessary to somehow elaborate on the commercial nature wording? If it is for a charitable uh, cause, um, well, the, the court should take into account that particular factor because many of the uh, big organizations, they will do large-scale promotions of this sort or, or large-scale activities. And if we were to encourage these, we have to consider uh, how they would be looked at by the court. Now, if we classify them as non-profit making, this will be tantamount to saying that this is not of a commercial nature, and rather it is of a charitable nature. Now, thank you for your uh, point. Now, for fair dealing, um, now under our, some of our copyright uh, clauses, um, the wording is already there, and it may not be the same as uh, clauses in overseas jurisdictions. And as Ms. Chong was saying, the situations that you mentioned are things that the court will take into account to make sure that the uh, requirements are met. Now, when we were considering exemptions to certain copyright clauses, um, we have taken that into account. You remember that last November, um, these cases have been touched on, um, defining um, what are, in fact, uh, commercial nature, profit making, and the kind of situations that the court will have to take into account. So the present wording is. Uh, in line with the, the fair dealing uh, situations that we handled earlier. Uh, Mr. Ma, now I'd like the government to clarify on 4D um, the effect of the dealing on the potential market or the value of the performance of fixation. Now I know that this is uh, a comprehensive approach the court will be taking when you were answering the previous question. Now, non-profit making doesn't mean that the organizer does not benefit. It could gain some sort of a non-material uh, gain. 
But for 4D, you mention potential market or value of the performance. Now, how do you decide or determine whether or not there's a potential market or how it is impacted upon? And, well, who should be responsible for the burden of proof? Um, And Ms. Chong, now on potential market, um, we have related uh, cases. Now, generally speaking, we're talking about reasonable ones that can be anticipated and that the copyright owner will uh, uncover or likely to uncover that particular market. Um, there would be derivative markets uh, or other related products. So that is a kind of a civil case consideration uh, regarding the potential market. Now the court will again look at the overall picture, the objective picture, to look at the potential market. Now let's say for a movie, there would be related um, souvenir items or toys. So these are very obvious ones. Now, but for the burden of proof, now in civil cases, now uh, whichever party uh, needs to raise this will have to supply the, the proof. Now, the paper um, table today is tabled this morning. Is that right? So when are we going to discuss this? We'll, we'll finish the clause by clause first. But is this uh, for the public? There is no numbering of the paper. Okay, I'd like to ask about um, what I actually asked before. Now under 2A, if you want to have this particular um, exemption, the item has to be released or communicated to the public. And under 5A, and the performance has been released to the public if it has been held in the public life. But other than by communication to the public. So my question is, how do you get this exemption? But for 5.1, well, you have to be released to the public, but if there are no copies made, well, what is to be done? Um, now, for 5A that you referred to, now, in brackets, it says other than by communication to the public, because underneath that, under the little Roman 3, the playing or the showing of fixation of the performance to the public. So this exemption applies only when there is already a showing to the public. Hence the wording here. So we want to explain what is meant by communicating to the public. And your earlier point about um, not allowing copies to be made now, because apart from the performers who have the right to make copies, other people cannot make copies. But the owner can authorize others to make copies. So um, copies are possible. Now, sometimes there are live performances or if there are not live performances, there are authorized copies to be released, then the exemption still applies. So from the consumer's angle, they would know when uh, exemptions can apply. Now, the you have B1, um, including uh, uh, releasing to the public. Okay, if nobody has copies, then will the exemption uh, apply to anyone at all? 
Now, can I just uh, try to answer in this way? Now, the question raised is um, the public, or in parentheses, other than by communication to the public. Now, one reason is if you look at 241 uh, bracket 5, now the performance has been released to the public. If it has been released to the public, then uh, and only then can this clause apply. But under 5 bracket A and B, um, explanation is explained what is meant by communicating to the public. It is not for communication. Uh, that is earlier uh, described in 2A. We are not talking about communication now. We are not talking about release, not communication. So we want to separate the two things. The simplest way to put it is the item in question is already within uh, the public domain, as it were. But logically, or, or the way it is worded, then there should be two separate issues. Because it says, other than here, yeah, um, it's easy to um, have some misunderstanding, so I can understand why the member has this concern. Uh, but of course, the English version is um, clearer than the Chinese version, because um, uh, in the English is other than, but um, in Chinese uh, it reads something like um, not including. So perhaps uh, the DFJ should look at the drafting again. In fact, um, it means um, uh, means uh, other than by communication to the public. Yes, Chairman. Concerning 5A, in, in fact, uh, we do not need um, to um, have the words in brackets because it already says by any means. All right, please um, look at the drafting. Um, Chairman, um, maybe um, uh, um, we can uh, improve upon the uh, Chinese version because I don't think it's right to say uh, not including um, by communication to the public. Right? Any more questions, Mr. Charles Mock? Chairman, uh, I think uh, we are talking about four things here: criticisms, reviews. Quotations and um, criticism, review, quotation, and then finally reporting and commenting on current events. All right. So, um, uh, um, so uh, it, it should be criticism, review, quotation. And then finally, reporting and commenting on current events. So for the first three, the subject um, can be anything. Is that right? Any works? <coughs> Copyright works. Uh, you need to um, say quote um, from the copyright works. Um, criticism can be... Um, in relation to other works, Chairman. So my first question is this, Chairman. Um, quotation. Um, what if um, some people um, refer to some copyright works, but not for criticism or review? So uh, is it that um, um, that will be um, exempted um, under this one? And then it says reporting and commenting on current events. I want to know uh, why in the heading it's um, reporting and commenting on current events, but under 2413 it's um, reporting or commenting on current events. 
uh, in the um, heading, we wish to um, um, say that um, um, the um, subsections are collectively on these subjects. But then uh, under three, and for there is room, uh, there is bigger room. Uh, in other words, you don't have to report and comment at the same time. So either reporting or commenting on current events um, will um, get the exemption. So in other words, uh, in fact, um, the uh, top this the uh, heading can read criticism, review quotations, reporting on current events, and commenting on current events. But then under subsection three, the conjunction is or, so it can either be reporting or commenting on current events. But of course, uh, when um, one reports on current affairs, um, there are no comments. But um, when one comments on current events, then um, one may be um, doing some reporting at the same time. Is that right? But anyway, uh, it's uh, fine as you've um, used the conjunction or. And then um, for talking about um, being of a commercial nature. I think uh, there uh, is a lot of confusion as to what is meant by um, being of a commercial value. Um, copyright owners, those involved in secondary um, creation, um, may all have different views about what is meant by having or being of a commercial nature. Say if I upload um, something onto um, um, the uh, website and I can get some um, advertising revenue, then that may be regarded as being of a commercial nature. And um, then another example is that say I may not be able to make a profit, but then if I um, spend some money to boost my post, I want people to um, read my post. And so I spend some money to um, um, try to boost my post. So I um, am, am in fact not making a profit. I'm in fact um, spending money uh, to boost um, the post. So is this um, of a commercial value? And then uh, although the website may not um, give me um, uh, a share of the profit um, because of what I've uploaded onto the website, um, um, he may be able to uh, earn more money. And then um, the ISP and the um, mobile phone um, supplier may also be able to get more profit, and the profit will not be shared by me. So. Um, I'm a bit worried that um, those are covered under Section 241 may still be held liable um, in some cases. Yes, Chairman, of course, um, well, we can only include the principle in the legislation. And there are four factors that we want the courts to consider in respect of fair dealing. But of course, um, it doesn't mean that the courts can only consider these four factors. We've included these four factors um, uh, um, because we've made reference to um, um, court cases in other common law jurisdictions. Um, um, if um, I understand that in some cases um, um, infringement um, may result, but we can't really categorically um, say whether um, this a case amounts to um, a case of um, a commercial nature. In fact, uh, we have prepared two papers for members on uh, fair dealing and the application of the four factors. In fact, in the paper, we've included six um, 
court cases. In all six cases, the courts uh, considered the four factors and um, uh, tried to balance the four factors and came to um, their judgment. Um, we think that the concept of fair dealing uh, will help um, the courts arrive at um, balanced judgments. Yes, I can understand the um, objective, Chairman. But we need to be clear about the legislative intent. We want to know whether the legislation seeks to um, sanction or uh, not to sanction certain acts. And we want the public to um, be able to um, understand um, the uh, um, the principles uh, instead of just um, um, believing that the courts will come to a fair judgment. In fact, there are scenarios uh, which, um, are in fact, are not banned by this piece of legislation. But of course, um, the courts um, will have to consider all the uh, factors and all the circumstances in uh, coming to um, their judgments. But then, as um, the legislature, we have the duty to clarify with the executive the legislative intent. We want to know whether the legislation sets out to a target or ban or restrict certain acts or behavior. So can I ask the administration to clarify its purpose or objective? And uh, can I also ask whether um, being of a commercial nature um, means um, um, a profit-making activity? What if um, I can't get a profit while others can? And uh, in the case I've just uh, referred to, I have no profit at all. I, um, in fact, have to spend some money boosting the post. And because I've spent the money, other people can make a bigger profit. So what's going to happen in that case? Yes, Chairman, thank you. I thank Mr. Mock for his question. I understand that um, there should be um, um, clear guidelines on how these factors should be applied. Um, uh, in fact, for part two, um, division three, uh, we we have um, one part, and then uh, section thirty-seven says that um, concerning certain acts, the ba there are two basic factors to be taken into account. Uh, first of all, um, uh, not um, to uh, um, encroach upon copyright owners' um, use of the works, and second, not to um, infringe upon um, the um, rights of the co um, copyright um, owners. So what is most important is to look at uh, whether the uh, copyright owner can still um, um, uh, use um, the copyright works in a normal manner, and whether the copyright owner's rights have been um, affected or infringed upon. So uh, these principles can help um, the courts um, um, apply fair dealing provisions. And so, if someone um, does some advertising. And uh, if the uh, copyright owner uh, does the same thing or does similar things uh, on the website, then there will be um, um, impact uh, on the copyright owner, and as a result, the, as a result, the courts may think that there is infringement. Chairman. In fact, uh, I'm just a netizen. I post something. Uh, on a website, and then I quoted and commented on some copyright works, and um, uh, most people may think that um, um, this is a common practice, and so the copyright o uh, owner will not be uh, affected in any way. But then I think I I I may decide to spend a few hundred dollars to boost um, the post, and does it mean that because of um, this, um, then? Um, 
this uh, matter um, um, is um, or becomes um, um, one of a commercial nature, or say uh, um, the courts may think, yes, I can post something on the website, but then uh, if I uh, spend some money to uh, boost the um, post, then um, that would be problematic. Yes, perhaps I can um, give uh, Mr. Mock some cases for him to consider. Um, um, a commercial um, act um, doesn't automatically uh, mean that the dealing is no longer a fair dealing. Now, there are factors A, B, C, D, and um, so. Um, the exemption applies if, um, after considering A, B, C, D, the uh, dealing is considered to be fair. Now, for example, in the U.S., gone with the wind. Um, in fact, it um, uh, in fact, it used to be wind gone done. Um, and uh, but then, um, of course, it was profit making. But then, um, uh, the courts decided that uh, it was fair use or fair dealing. And then there was a song which was um, um turned into a rap song, and the CDs were sold, and the courts uh, considered factors B, C, D, and they felt that the use was um still um fair use. In fact, we have no intention to ban um commercial dealings or profit making dealings, but then um this is one factor that the courts will take into account. But then the courts will also look at um the other factors. Yes, Chairman. The courts um um, I understand to um, um, allow some flexibility, but then it doesn't mean that um, such acts uh, will not be challenged. Now, in fact, um, in the cases that um, the administration referred to, um, um, the, um, they were um, brought to court. And then the court um, gave a ruling. So it doesn't mean that um, people doing these things will not um, um, be f um, challenged um, under civil law. Yes, um, it's good that the law uh, provides uh, for um, some leeway, but then. Um, um, Cases may still be brought before the courts. So I think um, you're talking about fair dealings as well as um, civil challenges. So uh, although um, there is an exemption uh, in the law, it doesn't mean that people can uh, do um, whatever they want. Mr. Ma Fong Kwok. Um, Chairman, I want to refer to the heading criticism, review, quotation, and report. Reporting and commenting on current um, events. Um, is it that, that this whole section is on um, um, commenting on current events? What about um, art reviews or criticism? Because for current, um, for um, commenting on current events. Um, the, um, the um, parts quoted uh, will not be very long, but then if it's um, say an um, a literary review, for example, then maybe um, a lot of the uh, content will be quoted. And say now, if there is a film review program, uh, a two-hour program, and um, um, then uh, in the program um, um, there may be. Um, a, a lot of uh, extracts from the film um, uploaded onto the website, and of course the um, extracts or the excerpts are the uh, um, uh, really the best ones. So, yes, Chairman. So long as it's a fair dealing, then um, it it will be um, okay. Do chair now including fair dealing. 
is to make sure that if certain conditions are fulfilled, then um, there is an exemption. And uh, this is not just to protect the owner of the copyright, but then um, netizens and other uh, members of the public also have uh, freedom to maneuver, so long as no real damage is done to the copyright owner. Now, but every time when we come to this particular point, we wish to ask for clarification. Now, I think it's good for Ms. Chong to just repeat this. It's not that whenever there is commercial nature or profit making, then there will be no exemption. So thank you for making that clear, because Mr. Mock and myself have asked similar questions. Sometimes we are only uh, passively reaping the benefits because um, by a certain uh, number of uh, hits, um, then uh, well, people would get some sort of a bonus. And if you submit uh, articles um, for gain, monetary gain, uh, this could uh, become a problem. And of course, if we were to present this to the court, the court will have to decide uh, after looking at all these scenarios. Now, if we only create something, uh, a parody, okay, for play, um, I think um, people would want to know whether it is safe for him or her to do such parody. Because you don't want to find yourself uh, at the wrong end of the law. And of course, if people are not sure and then they refrain from doing it, then your intention to protect them would become meaningless because they are not sure, they are not reassured. Now, the, the point about the actual amount referred to uh, is not really helping them because they, they will not know how, how much is, is too much. If let's say the program is ten hours, um, well, what is to be done? Do do I just get uh, one tenth of it? But what if I get the most important uh, one tenth, including the um, the final result of the program, and then I may be sued for infringing copyright. Now, so the wording um, by itself does not really help. So with your explanation, then um, it may help in the future if we were to resort to your uh, the recording of what you're saying today. Because the wording itself is not entirely clear. So, Chairman, I hope you understand uh, why uh, we want to ask the government to explain a little bit more. I know, Chairman, you said this is very clear already, but then, um, yes. Now, your request is, uh, again, dangerous because the government cannot tell you a certain percentage above which it becomes a problem. So at the end of the day, Whenever you use the copyright product, you have to be very careful. Maybe Ms. Chong would, would care to explain. Yes. Um, okay. In helping the user, yes, I, I know we will come across uh, questions of a similar nature. Now, I can say two things. Um, the cases are relatively clear. Now, uh, Pretty Woman or Gone with the Wind, as mentioned by Ms. Chong earlier, and all the six cases referred to, and there are the four factors and how they are handled. Now, there are uh, things to follow. And the extent very often depends on the purpose of the reproduction. So that is one factor to consider. So in different cases, 
um, you will have to rely on different yardsticks. Now, sometimes uh, you have to look at the uh, the actual or the substantial portion uh, copied, and this is referred to uh, in earlier papers. Now, when we devise such exemptions. We want to strike a balance between the two extremes, and of course, there's a lot of education work uh, to be done, so that the users as well as the copyright owners uh, both know where they stand. And we try to produce such guidelines uh, as much as possible. Now, if you look at the UK, um, they also. Uh, do this sort of uh, promotional work um, to help the public uh, understand and that they won't fall far of the law. Now, do you do that when after the law is passed, or do you try to do it now? So I can have a look at it. You want to educate the public, but you have to educate me uh, first of all. I, I think so. I can answer uh, questions from the public. Mr. Chan, now this is fair dealing. is not entirely new. Um, we have actually done that in the past, um, and whether it is fair. Now the four factors are the same. Now for educating the public, um, in the intellectual property rights office, um, those uh, stipulations are there already from 2007 onwards and there are real cases uh, there and I believe those are very very useful so can I ask maybe Mr. Chan to look at it and uh, in educating the public uh, we have already started already the original legislation on um, fair dealing still apply in the present case and I believe um, the public will uh, understand this. Okay, I think on the education side is uh, less controversial, but if you look at the parody, satire, and so on, um, there would be more uh, problems. I think we have discussed this uh, three or four times already. And I am not sure we will achieve any breakthrough by uh, repeating them here. Now, can I suggest that we move on, please? Legal advisor. Thirty nine five A Roman little three. performance to the public. Now, the English version says performance in public. And will this be amended just like uh, Article 39? Can the government confirm that? Uh, yes. OK, we can move on. 241 uh, capital A, a new um, uh, exemption, and we add added parody, satire, caricature, and prestige. Now, the uh, wording is comparable to what has been done before, but this time we look at the performers and the uh, recorded materials. Any questions by members? We move on. Um, section 242, incidental inclusion of performance or fixation. And to repeal the broadcasting or inclusion in a cable program service. And substitute or communicating to the public. 
this is um, a consequential amendment. Okay. So members have no questions now. Yes, Mr. Chen. On this incidental inclusion. Now, if you use Dancing Baby from the U.S., then uh, what is to be done? Uh, it is possible. Now, uh, incidental, you asked about this already because um, this is not your main point, right? Uh, we will consider whether it is an incidental inclusion. Uh, what you just said uh, on the dancing baby, uh, you can actually uh, apply this. If it's a background music and if it's incidental inclusion, then you can uh, resort to this. Okay, we can move on. 242, uh, capital A. Um, fair dealing for purposes of giving or receiving instruction and repeal um, 242A bracket 4 um, uh, making available of copies and then we substitute um, the word communication so substituting communication and repealing, uh, making available of copies. And then section 242A4, little a, a little one, and we repeal copies of the fixation through blah, 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 and substitute fixation through the network so that the fixation is communicated only to persons who need to use. And followed by 242A, 4, little a, uh, Roman little 2, and uh, repeal copies of the fixation R by uh, fixation is, and then um, section 242A, 4, little b, little 1, repeal copies of the fixation through the network, and so on, and then substitute fixation through the network so that the fixation is communicated only to persons who need to use. So similar to what has been said before. And then number five, section 242A4, little b, little 2, repeating copies of the fixation are and substitute fixation is and then number six, out of section 242A, bracket four, we add for the purposes of subsection three, a fixation is dealt with if it is possessed, shown, or played in public or distributed, other than for the purposes mentioned in subsection one, for the purpose of or in the course of any trade or business, or B, sold or let for hire, or offered or exposed for sale or hire. Now here I am a little bit confused now for the fixation copies and the amended copies. And then what are the differences between the two? And then for 4A, now why do you put, down, put this down under 4 and not 3? Can you please uh, explain? Concerning um, the fixation, now, um, now we have um, the uh, introduced the uh, right of communication, and so we've um, um, deleted um, the uh, copy, and then why not um, in three A? Why is it that it's in four A? Four A, in fact, um, um, seeks to explain um, an earlier clause. Perhaps um, the law draftsman can supplement here. Yes. 
In fact, we have um, this provision um, elsewhere. It's mainly in the um, last um, provision. Uh, Mr. Marfong Kwok? No? Yes, I think we can continue then. Chairman, um, two, four, three. Things done for purpose of instruction or examination. So we've um, um, deleted uh, certain parts. And then um, two, four, three, three. Uh, we have also um, deleted um, certain references, and in fact, it's just um, uh, the cha um, the uh, language. The, but then we, um, in fact, want to further explain three a. In other words, if um, um, the succession is. Um, um, possessed, shown, or played in the public or distributed for the purpose of or in a course of any trade or business and be sold or let for hire or offered or exposed for sale or hire or C communicated to the public unless that communication is not an infringement of the rights um, conferred by this part. So in other words, um, that would mean an infringement um, copy. I don't understand. Why is it that um, being communicated to the public is equivalent to being dealt with? In fact, um, we've already explained that um, um, we are talking about um copies um for um purposes of instruction or examination and so other than for these purposes that would be um unauthorized um communication and that's um an infringement and so we Uh, I'm not talking about um, cases of trade or doing business. So, um, in fact, it's a legal concept uh, um, um, of uh, being dealt with. So, if I um, steal something from you and then um, distribute. Um, those items uh, to uh, other people, so would that be regarded as uh, being dealt with? Because A says um, um, it's about um, in the course of doing business. But I don't understand. Uh, it's not about um, any trade or business. But what if I um, communicate that to the public, but then it's um, not um, um, regarded as being dealt with. But that may be regarded as an infringement. And that um, is said here, a fixation is um, dealt with. All right, then uh, we can continue. Two, four, five. Recording, copying, or communication by educational establishments, broadcasts, or cable programs, and this new title substitutes or this heading substitutes the um, previous heading: recording of broadcasts and cable programs by educational establishments. So the uh, scope has been expanded to cover communication, and then two, four, five. Um, Subsection 1, after that we have um, inserted 1A. A person authorized by an educational establishment may, without infringing the rights conferred by this part, communicate to an authorized recipient a recording 
or copy of a recording of a broadcast or cable program that has been made in accordance with Section 1. If A, the person makes the communication for the educational purposes of the establishment, and B, the establishment takes all reasonable steps to ensure that only authorized recipients receive the communication and the authorized recipients do not make any copy or further transmission of the communication. Now, members, any questions, please? Mr. Chen? Um, can you give examples of um, reasonable steps? And can you also explain what is meant by authorized recipients? Ah, uh, yes. I thank the member for the question. The exemptions are the same as those applicable to copyright works. But of course here we're talking about um, performances and fixations. The safeguards are the same. When we discussed exemptions for copyright works, we gave members a paper explaining all reasonable steps and authorized recipients. Uh, the Chinese version has been tabled. Um, paragraph capital B um, concerning the proposed section 45. So we have um, the definition of authorized recipients as well as the meaning of taking all reasonable steps. I believe we'll um, come back to this paper later. I want to say that the exemptions here are the same as those applicable to copyright works, but uh, we have um, chosen to repeat them here because they are rights in relation to performances. So the um, exemptions and rights are consistent. And the, uh, here um, we have exemptions for education establishments. All right, uh, let's uh, move on, 245A. Uh, 245 capital A and 245B after section 245. 245A, copying or communication by educational establishments, public sound recordings or films. As Mr. Wong has pointed out, there are comparable provisions um, under the copyright section. We have um, decided to expand the um, scope of exemptions to include communication as well. And in fact, the wording and the principle are the same. I wonder if members have got any questions. Right, members? Questions? No? Then uh, we can continue. Yes, Chairman, 245. Capital B, communication playing or showing by librarians, curators or archivists, sound recordings or films. Uh, then 246, uh, we um, propose to add curators um, in the heading. And then 246, sub, uh, super six one, um, the new version reads, librarian, curator or archivist of a specified library, museum or archive. And then um, the word li uh, museum is also added after library. Uh, please continue. 246 capital A. Um, Chairman, fair dealing for purposes of public administration. And um, after subsection 3, we are adding 3 capital A. For the purposes of sub subsection 3, a fixation is dealt with if it is 
possess, shown or played in public or distributed otherwise than for the purposes mentioned in subsection 1 for the purpose of or in the course of any trade or business or sold or let for hire or offered or exposed for sale or hire. So um, for acts um, beyond the scope of exemption, they uh, amount to infringement acts. Um, and all right, let's um, move on to two five two. Yes, two five two. Certain copying permitted when performances um, are communicated to the public. And uh, we've uh, deleted the words "made available," and uh, they are substituted by the word "communicated." Then two five two. A temporary reproduction by service providers. So um, this is for um, uh, people watching and listening to or or, re or reading the um, relevant parts. Mr. Chen. Uh, what is meant by uh, anyone um, among the public? Oh, why can't we simply have the words the public? Um, the public would mean um, quite a large number of people, but um, anyone um, among the public uh, means um, just um, any one of the audience. So that's um, clearer in our view. Any questions? Uh, Chairman, uh, 252 capital A. And um, these are um, similar to the new exemptions for copyright works. Temporary reproduction by service providers. So the, the rights conferred by this part in a fixed performance are not infringed by the making and storage of a copy or of a fixation by a service provider if certain conditions are met. For example, 60, in 65 capital A, in fact, it's um, caching uh, um, um, so that um, people can get the information uh, very um, speedily. And so there is an exemption. Um, continue, please. Section 253, use of fixations of spoken words in certain cases. 2531, um, we propose to delete um, paragraph B of broadcasting or including in a cable program service the whole or part of the reading or recitation. And this is, in fact, a technical amendment similar to that for copyright works. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Chen, reciting lyrics or reading from a newspaper, can one do that? Now, the wording here is uh, actually trying to include what comes after that, uh, commenting on the uh, current affairs or doing a recitation uh, or literary works or lyrics as you were saying so this is one of the literary works so they will uh, be included okay is that clear okay so let's move on uh, section 272 capital A amended on moral rights conferred on certain performers. First of all, 272A, capital 4, repealing the definition of making it available to the public life. And then uh, section 272A, bracket 5, repealing cable program service and then substituting cable program service, uh, leaving out the uh, communication to the public. Uh, semicolon and and then number three section 272a bracket 9 repealing 
uh, bracket 3, and then section 272A bracket 9, repeating copies of or uh, wherever appearing. Any questions? Then 272B amended right to be identified as performer. Now this is similar to 272A um, repeating made available to the public live, broadcast live or included live in a cable program service and then substitute or communicated to the public live. And then 272 uh, capital B one repeating paragraph uh, bracket little b and substitute the sound recording in which the performance is fixed is communicated to the public or copies of such a sound recording are issued to the public and then three section two seven two b uh, bracket two repeating or making available and then f four section two seven two b bracket three repeating broadcast or cable program and substitute or communication. Moving on to section 272D amended exceptions to write under section 272B and uh, section 272D bracket 4 repeating paragraph A and substitute uh, bracket little a section 241 criticism review quotation and reporting and com commenting on current events and then uh, A, B, Section 241A, Bracket Parody, Satire, Caricature and Pastiche. Okay, so uh, technical amendments, so we can move on, right? 272E amended, right to object to derogatory treatment. Section 272E2, bracket little a, repeating broadcast included in live performance, uh, a included in the cable program, program service or made available to the public live and substitute or communicated to the public live. Section 272E2, uh, bracket little b and bracket little 1, repeating broadcast or includes in the cable program service and substitute or communicates to the public. And three, section 272E2, bracket little b, repeating subparagraph, bracket little 2. And then section 272E2C, uh, bracket little 1, repeating broadcast or includes in the cable program service the sounding, recording, or... Now this is uh, similar to previous amendments. I'm not going to go into details here. Now, Chair, I uh, asked about um, derogatory treatment last time, and uh, the answer was there are no cases in Hong Kong. So what about overseas jurisdictions regarding examples of um, derogatory treatment? Now, in this particular session, we did not have uh, specific, specific papers on this, but last time, I submitted a paper targeting this particular point. So you can refer to that paper. Okay, so we can uh, do that again. Now, if members have no further questions, we move on to section 273. Amended uh, is interpretation of sections 273 to 273H. And section 273, bracket 1, bracket C, bracket 1, after the semicolon, we add or, and then 273, bracket 1, bracket little c, repeating subparagraph uh, little Roman 2, and substitute 2, communicates the work to the public. And so section 271, bracket 1, bracket little c, a repeating subparagraph bracket little three. This is a technical amendment. Legal advisor. Now communicates the work to the public.
public. Now this corresponds to uh, Mr. Chen's earlier point also on communicating to the public. Now why is it that in 252 uh, Now, the English does not say communicating to any member of the public, but rather just communicating to the public. So the Chinese... Mm. Now, why is it that there seems to be a discrepancy here? Yes, we will uh, revise that and then uh, come back to you. Yeah, because earlier on, any member of the public was used, but here um, it is just uh, the public. We can move on if members have no questions. So it's uh, 273 capital B, um, amended rights and remedies in respect of devices and services designed to circumvent effective technological measures. Now again, this is a corresponding um, Technical amendment um, number one, section 273b, 3c1, after the semicolon, add the word or, and then section 273b, 3 little c, repealing sub paragraph little 2, substitute, communicates the work to the public, and then in section 273b, 3c, repealing sub paragraph uh, little Roman 3. No questions, we move on. Section 273D, um, amended exceptions to Section 273A. And under 273D, 8B, repeal librarian or archivist of a specified library or archive and uh, substitute librarian curator or archivist of a specified library, museum, or archive. 274, amended rights and remedies in respect of unlawful acts to interfere with rights management information. And in section 274, 2, bracket little b, we repeal, makes available to the public sales or lets for hire imports into or exports from Hong Kong, broadcast or includes in a cable program service. And we substitute to communicate to the public sales or lets for hire or imports into or exports from Hong Kong. And again, this is uh, we to add in communicate, and then the copies, or the word copies is deleted. And then in section 274, bracket 3, we repeal making available and substitute communication. We can move on if members have no questions. Schedule 2 amended copyright transitional provisions and savings. Um, paragraph 17, uh, little b, repealing broadcasting the work or including it in a cable program service and substitute communicating the work to the public. And this is a consequential amendment um, for Schedule 2 amended. Questions, members? No? Now, this brings to an end our close-by-close uh, -close scrutiny. And... Um, in the past, we have received documents from the administration responding to members' queries. And we have several papers here. So table today, uh, not yet numbered. And the secretary can maybe consolidate these papers and number them. And in the next meeting, we can look at these responses. Now, um, date of next meeting, 19th of May, Tuesday, 2.30 p.m. 
And if there are no further questions, we will um, adjourn the meeting earlier today because some papers are not yet read and we don't have time to prepare. So shall we adjourn here? Uh, anything from you, Su Wong? You, you want to continue? No, 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 no. Because um, you, you, you table certain papers today, uh, and members need time to digest them because some members are not here today. So I think to be fair, uh, we should let them have a look at it. And next time we can, uh, well, uh, do a more thorough job. And in any case, uh, well, if these are only technical ones, then I think we, we, we better leave it to next time. Yes, I have several meetings. I mean, same here, said the chairman. Yes. I, I, I'm I sorry for being late because I just attended another meeting. I know the government has yet to answer many questions. Do you want to do them in one go or, or, or space them out? Now, we're not going to wait for everything to come here. Now, next meeting is the 19th. And we already have several papers, and we will deal with them um, in phases. Let's ask the secretariat to 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 deal with them, to sort the papers out. Yes, I, I said that already. Yes, all the papers to be dealt with will be numbered and categorized by the secretariat. Okay. So um, there are no AOB items. I declare the meeting adjourned, and thank you very much.